All right, here's our second video from 4.4. In this video, we're gonna do a couple different examples, but this time it's gonna look a little bit different. In our last video, we added polynomials together. Now let's talk about what happens when we wanna subtract polynomials. Before we do that, look at example five with me. You notice that in example five, there's parentheses, but there's a negative sign in the front. Really, what number though is in front of those parentheses? Similar to the last examples, isn't there an invisible one? but this time it actually happens to be a negative one. So if I wanna simplify and get rid of those parentheses, instead of distributing a positive one, now I wanna make sure that I distribute or multiply every term in this polynomial by a negative one. So what is a negative one times a negative seven x to the fourth? Well, two negatives, remember, make a positive, right? And a negative one times a negative five ninths makes a positive and a negative one times a positive eight gives me a negative eight x squared, and a negative one times a negative x gives me a positive x, and a negative one times a positive 67 gives me a negative 67. So I can simplify taking away my parentheses by distributing a negative one, multiplying it through to every single term. You should end up with a positive x to the fourth plus five ninths x cubed minus eight x squared plus one x minus 67. None of those terms are like terms. They don't have the same variable with same exponent. I'm written in standard form, so it looks like that's as simplified as I can get it. Just distributing that negative one through helps a lot though. Let's use that to do example number six. Example number six is now asking us to take this polynomial and subtract this polynomial. Just like we did in the first video, we want to take the numbers in front of each parenthesis and distribute it to get rid of the parentheses, and then we want to combine like terms. So what number is in front of this first parenthesis? Remember it was an invisible positive one? So let's go through and distribute every term by positive one. One times nine x to the fifth is just a nine x to the fifth. One times x cubed is just a positive x cubed. 1 times negative 2x is still just a negative 2x squared, and 1 times 4 is a 4. But now be careful. Look at the second set of parentheses. What number is in front of that second set of parentheses? This time, this problem is a little bit different than an adding problem because now there's a negative 1. And that negative 1, we just saw in the last example, changes every sign and every term in that second set of parentheses. So when I go to distribute this negative one, what's a negative one times a negative two x to the fifth? You should end up getting a positive two x to the fifth, right? So it's important now that the sign changes to a plus sign. When I distribute or multiply this negative one to this positive one, don't you get a negative one x to the fourth? And a negative one times a negative four, you get a positive four x cubed. And a negative one times a negative three x squared, you get a positive x squared. So all of the signs in those second parentheses should change because we're multiplying every term in there by a negative one. So now you should have this big old long polynomial with a whole bunch of different terms. But if you look, some of these terms are like terms. So we can simplify a little bit more by now combining those like terms. Now that we've gotten rid of the parentheses by distributing our numbers, we can combine all of our like terms. So I notice that I have a nine x to the fifth plus a two x to the fifth. Um, I see a lonely negative x to the fourth. I see a 1x cubed and a 4x cubed. Together that gives me a 5x cubed. I have a negative 2x squared and a positive 3x squared that gives me a 1x squared. And then it looks like I have a lonely 4. After combining like terms, writing it in standard notation, you should have 11x to the fifth minus 1x to the fourth plus 5x cubed plus 1x squared plus four. All right, why don't you try B by yourself? Get rid of those parentheses by distributing the numbers in front and then combine like terms for me. Let's see if you get the same answer as I do. In the front of this first parentheses, there's a positive one. One times seven is seven x to the fifth. One times one is one x cubed and one times negative nine x is negative nine x. Let's distribute the number in front of the second parentheses, which remember, be careful, is a negative one. So negative one times three is a negative three x to the fifth. Do you see that? There's not a double negative. There's just one negative three right there. So I have a negative three x to the fifth. 
When I distribute the negative 1 to the negative 4, I end up getting a positive 4x cubed, and negative 1 times 5 is a negative 5. I've now gotten rid of all my parentheses. I combine all of my like terms, and I ended up getting 4x to the fifth plus 5x cubed minus 9x minus 5. Hopefully you got the same thing I did. Be careful when there's that negative 1 in between and you have to distribute. All right, do you remember when we did adding and subtracting, we did columns? Well, you can do columns too when you're subtracting. And so look at this one here. It asks us to take this trinomial and subtract this polynomial from it, but use columns. So just like I did when I added, I'm going to write all of my polynomials in its own column. I have an x cubed plus an x squared. You notice that there is no x term, so that column is blank. And then I have a minus 12. And then I want to subtract, now be careful, I want to subtract every single term. So just like before, there's really a negative 1 here that I'm going to eventually have to distribute. I want to subtract a negative 2x cubed. I want to subtract a 1x squared. I want to subtract a negative 3x, and I want to subtract a 6. So really, what we need to do is we need to subtract a negative 2x cubed. Well, if I have a negative 1 in front of there, what's negative 1 and a negative 2? What's negative 1 times negative 2? I get positive 2, right? And if I subtract an x squared, it's now a negative. If I subtract a negative 3, two negatives make a positive 3. And then negative 1 times 6 is a negative 6. So make sure you change all the signs in your second polynomial when you have a negative 1 in front. And now all we're doing is we're just combining our terms in each column. Look at your x cubed column, look at your x squared column, look at your x column, and look at your constants. If I have a 1x cubed and I want to combine it with a 2x cubed, I end up getting a 3x cubed. I have a 1x squared and a negative 1x squared, so those kind of zero each other out. I have a lonely 3x that I can drop down. And I have a negative 12 and a negative 6. Combining those, I get a negative 18. So my final answer using columns would be 3x cubed plus 3x uh, minus 18. So again, either technique, depending on which one you like, this one might help you stay organized. But be careful. Make sure you take that negative 1 and distribute it to every single term in that second polynomial. All of your signs should change before you start combining like terms.